So, fun fact, my water bottle, like, snapped closed. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard that. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> half a second before my clap sync. Um, if you look at the sound wave, it's obvious which one is the clap sync, but... <laughs> Just watch out Don't sync that. on the wrong one. <laughs> I thought, so oh, wow, so, someone's time and date really fucked up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought someone clapped about two full seconds before... Yeah, Everyone that was the else. water bottle snapping, mm. which sounds very similar to a clap sink, but hopefully the wave is not quite as powerful. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, That's the worst thing that happens in the course of this podcast. I think we'll be good. But it won't oh, be. Oh, boy. <laughs> should, should I just go into it? Yes. What are we doing here? What is this? <laughs> <clears throat> Where are we? Welcome, friends, family, enemies, acquaintances, lovers, haters, and everyone else to a special episode of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast. Today, we are doing the 2019 Top Tens. On. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, prisoner's dilemma. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be similar to what we did last year, where all of us submitted our favorite games, shows, and movies that we experienced in the year 2019, and yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was just experimenting with that. I apologize. Oh, we gotta get our soundboard. If our patrons get us to some goal in the future, we will invest in a soundboard. I do. I do have the ham horn soundboard on my app. It's got. Uh, it only has. Two does it have sound. Drake? It may not mean nothing what? <laughs> That's not a <laughs> copyright claim. <laughs> copyright claim. <laughs> yeah. What? That's not a soundboard. That's just part of a song. What's Kanye? Pass the drone. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> I am, I am, the Voluntary Viewing Podcast <laughs> does not endorse whatever was just said. I didn't hear it or understand it. And it might have been really offensive. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I don't know. <laughs> Community is nowhere on this list, unfortunately. Uh... Six seasons in a movie. One day. One day after they finish Rick and Morty, probably, which is on a lot of our list. Um, yeah. Hey-o. So we will go through these. Uh, start at well, we will start each category by listing off our own choices. Uh, cycle through who suggests uh, which one should take the number ten spot, and then the next person number nine, etc., 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 until we get to number one. Uh, an item can only be voted into a position uh, by. Uh, majority vote uh, does not have to be unanimous, but two people do have to be on board for it. And yeah, this year we added uh, another restriction in that it had to, uh, this media had to have some kind of release in 2019. Uh, didn't necessarily have to premiere in 2019, but have to have something that counted as a release in 2019. So. If a new episode of a show aired in 2019, we can count it. If a game got a port to a different count, uh, console, we can count it. I don't think we had anything as uh, uh, semantic as something being released on Netflix. But, you know, that's very much the spirit of this. Um, Any other rules? We all self-correct. So the rules kind of, it's like common law. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the rules are established as we go with some of these things because, or uh, categories. Yes. <laughs> where everyone else decides on whether or not it counts versus hard and fast rules. So there you go. Uh, um, yeah, we, so yeah, we list our own top 10 and then we take turns nominating one mm-hmm. for each spot starting at 10, working our way down to one. And it's a prisoner's dilemma in that you have to work with people, but also not work with people if you want to get yours uh, into the top 10 as much as possible. 
And if you're like me, um, as I've previously mentioned in some of these podcasts, I just think my top 10 TV shows should be the top 10. Um, <laughs> because I watched 25 TV shows that I think belong in the top 10 this year. Not just, which, 20, as you, not just yeah. 25 TV shows. 25 TV shows that he believes belong yeah. in the top 10. I've probably watched more like 35, 40 TV shows this year. So it feels like... I want that to be the definitive version. Granted, there's no anime on there, so I might get a little pushback, but I'm willing to sacrifice the entirety of my movie and video games top 10 because I don't think that they are nearly as worthwhile as uh, my TV. And I've made that abundantly clear in hopes that I get some some lubricant uh, on my own list. And I've even, even included a helpful guide of... TV shows that I think are relatively acceptable down below my top ten. <laughs> oh, but Ryan, <laughs> that I watched. that's not fun. <laughs> so you can nominate one of those, and it, it's got a better chance than some random wee bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you are making no, enemies at the beginning of this podcast, bud. No, no enemies, no enemies. Well, no, we, those, those wee video games, oh, man, they're going to be all over this place. Fire Emblem Three Houses, hell yeah. Put it up in number one. I don't give a shit. I don't want it to be number one. I want Cadence, it to be the number Cadence ten. Cadence of Hyrule. Cadence of Hyrule, I don't give a fuck. Let's do it. I mean, I I would be okay if Cadence of Hyrule got the number one spot. Um, <laughs> there you go. Andrew, do you, do you have anything uh, Broly? to... Broly? Broly in the movies list? Get it up there, boy. <laughs> I'm down. Jesus. I don't give no fuck. But when it comes to... Fucking tig tone. <laughs> nah. You know oh, what, Ryan? I, I'm at least with you on that one. Wow. Wow. Did you watch Hard a single episode alliances. of Tig Tone, Andrew? No. Well, then <laughs> shut the hell up. I'm um, scared. <laughs> Andrew, you got. <laughs> do you have anything to add? Um, uh, maybe just a question for the crowd. What do you do if you don't have 10? Because. I I don't have ten on my games. So. I I went through and I have only where whereas Ryan has twenty five TV shows just that he be- <laughs> believes uh, belong <laughs> that they belong in the top ten. I have six total shows <laughs> that I've seen that came out this year. <laughs> I see Good Omens below Game of Thrones, yeah. which has the disclaimer because I have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So somehow that made it below the show where he has nothing. And, and I liked Good Omens, but like I, <laughs> I debated not even it. putting it on the list because I know how <laughs> fucking vitriol you guys are <laughs> towards this show. So yeah. it, was, I, it, you know, I kind of thought maybe it's not even worth it including. I also love that you split your top games into five, and then there's. <laughs> Two spaces yeah. and then three at the bottom. Those in eight, nine, and ten. The, the the eight, nine, and ten games are because those are games that I technically played that I don't believe belong on a top ten list, but I played them, which is more than most games. This is a media focused podcast. I know. I, this, is, this is the joke that we've been going on for almost eighty episodes. Is that I, it's a. It's a podcast about television, video games, and movies, and I don't do any of it. <laughs> I have at least half a dozen, I don't know, whatever media that I was like, huh, I don't know about this, but I'll check it out so I can talk about it on the podcast. I don't have time. <laughs> oh, bullshit. <laughs> Andrew, this is a money-positive podcast now. You need to start taking this more seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Start skipping those concerts and start studying yeah. media literacy. <laughs> I, um, I was asking Jade if she remembered anything I was forgetting on this list. And she's like, just tell them that, you know, you go outside and stuff. I'm like, if I say oh that, God. they're going to fucking eat me alive. <laughs> yeah. Fucking try hard. <laughs> Life try hard. Oh, you go you go out. You, you have friends and see sunlight. Fucking loser. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys do on your lunch breaks? Like, or do you have lunch breaks? I apologize. <laughs> am I am I exposing <laughs> labor issues? Cool. I don't know. Uh, I have lunch breaks and I just watch TV during it. So I have a half hour lunch break, but uh, I don't. There's have, a comedy right there. I do not have access to any streaming services at work. 
What does that mean? Like, I don't, I don't have, like, I have Netflix technically because, uh, hey, guys, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but uh, we steal Jade's family's Netflix. Um, oh, my but God. But it's, it's split between so many devices that we have it on the TV at home and can't get it on anything else. And I, <laughs> and I do not have any other streaming services. <laughs> Just just pay for anything. Jeez, no. Jeez. Pay for one service and rotate. No. It's fine. Fucking you pirate can it. it. <laughs> well, for TV, well, def- I'm definitely not at work. I mean, you're definitely not at the, required the work. That right. <laughs> you have a Switch now. Take that with you and knock out fucking half an hour of a video game level. Uh, that that might be a problem at work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's fair. <laughs> For me personally, I know that wouldn't fly. I could watch TV not on my lunch break. I don't because I know that it's cheap. But on my lunch break, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, go for it. Green light. It's important. Research. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of nudity. And it's like, ooh, this is awkward. <laughs> now I feel weird. <laughs> I I minimize the tab and just listen. Uh, I have done that before. <laughs> <laughs> or I just... You open up a new tab, and you, oh yeah, and you just pretend that you're like browsing Deadline or something. Well, the well, you can hear the sex scene still playing out. I, it's like cool. I don't want to go into detail, but for one of my gigs, I literally in a team meeting had to list different genres of porn, so the analytics department knew what to start tracking. There you go. That sounds very safe for work at that particular gig. It. <laughs> However, Although you, you'd probably had to, you had to like temper it. Like yeah. you obviously couldn't go to the really weird shit. Otherwise, <laughs> you would have been looked down upon. I mean, you had to kind of be like amateur. And <laughs> it's already it. It was already the stuff within hentai. So we are deep into the. Pool, oh man. my oh, the, god! So. <laughs> These are just the categories <laughs> within hentai. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's already... <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no vanilla. No. There's no vanilla left anymore. No. <laughs> oh, my it, God. We're now diving in. Why can't we just get some normal, like, you know, <laughs> tame hentai? <laughs> that is an oxymoron, my friend. Yeah, honestly, yeah. That, that should be a question. And, like, everybody was... Here's the normal hentai. <laughs> and, like, everybody was cool. People at my work, people in the meeting, like... They appreciated and needed my contribution there, oh, but Jesus definitely Christ. a what the fuck is my life moment. <laughs> There's no way that none of them were looking at you a little differently when you listed off 15 variants I, of hentai. I just, I just imagine Lucas as the like Charlie Day where he's got all the mm-hmm. stuff on the wall going crazy yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Oh man! And here is you know what fan favorite the ugly bastard. <laughs> like, no. oh, <laughs> why is that such a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I do. I do know that. I mean, maybe I'm getting uh, like hangout sessions mixed up, but I'm pretty sure there was a point where Luke's and I were hanging out where I had th- thrown up my back the day before, and I was pretty much immobile, and so Lucas took the remote. And turned on like a video, like explaining different kinds of hentai on YouTube. <laughs> it was my hell. And you and you couldn't move. I couldn't. Like, couldn't oh. fucking move. Yeah, <laughs> you torture, just prying your eyelids open. First yeah. off, we were drunk. Second off, oh yeah, I remember I got drunk. Wear to try a to... lifting belt, you idiot. I just I I. I wasn't lifting weights. I literally just bent over to pick something up that I You dropped. were doing yard work. <laughs> yeah, I, dr- I dropped, like, it's, I wasn't, like, digging stuff. I was just, like, trimming some bushes. And I dropped a stick. Just like that hentai. Oh. I don't know. Trimming <laughs> so it bushes better when you were just sticks. trimming bushes. Yeah, the trimming bushes worked better. <laughs> then you had to ruin it. Anyway, so which category are we starting off with? Uh, so we started we with games uh, last year. Do we want to do that again? Do we want to push television up to number one? Or do we want uh, movies to kind of circle up on top? Movies, I think, might be like the least contentious. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of common movies. Yeah, do we want to... I feel like that would be the better um, learning curve okay. category this year. Okay. Possibly. Well, let's start there. Um... 
I want to kicks it off. I, I want to yeah, say I, that I'm, I'm proud of myself for seeing ten movies this year. <laughs> and I would, were you like me? Did you cram a yeah. cram a few in the end there? Yep, I crammed the Irishman in last week. And Jesus, and then, and, then, and then I remembered that I watched Between Two Ferns. <laughs> yep. Andrew, I would be proud if you could take us through your top ten movies of 2019. Sure. Are we doing this uh, starting at ten or starting at one? Uh, starting at ten, like like we'll do for the main one. Okay. Uh, number ten for Andrew's top movies: Spider Man: Far From Home, because it's a movie that I saw in 2019, <laughs> and it's <laughs> it's not bad. It's you know I I, I enjoyed it. I'm I feel like I'm I'm falling off of the Marvel movies now that Endgame is done. Maybe I'll see a That's couple weird. other ones, but I know you, Ryan, said you I, felt the same way. I'm making a stand. I'm, I'm never going to see another Marvel movie in theaters. Did now that really Far From Home is out on like DVD and Disney Plus, are you going to watch it? It's not on Disney Plus. Is it not? Ooh. But when it is, I will. Oh, okay. Is Wait, it? You... I thought it was either on Netflix or Disney Plus. No. Nope. Hmm. I have been checking. All right. Number nine. Uh, the Irishman. <laughs> we talked about it in length in the last podcast, so I don't think I need to say anything more. Um, other other than I did remember a moment from the movie that just, I think at that point I knew I wasn't really going to like the movie. It was, there was a scene where Robert De Niro is like meeting with Joe Pesci, where Joe Pesci is kind of like explaining, you know, like that he could, you know, like they could work together and. You know, uh, Rob De Niro is in the war, so he's killed people before, and, like, they could use someone like that. And it was like, do you have problems with, you know, doing nasty stuff? And he was like, ah, you know, I was in Italy in World War II, and basically talking about, like, the horrors of war and, like, how, you know, like, you you follow orders and, like, sometimes you got to do things and people die. Like, nothing you can really do about it. And then it cuts back to a flashback that was kind of funny to me just because of how stupid it was where he's forcing two German soldiers to dig their own grave before he murdered them. And he's like, orders are orders, you know, you just got to do what you got to do to survive. I'm like, that's fucking stupid. Just uh, dig your own grave. I, <laughs> I, I have to do this. It's heat of the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and, you don't understand. And then shoot him. This was my order. Shoot him dead. Yeah. Um, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't say kill those guys and then bury them. They said, Make them dig their own grave first. Uh, number eight, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Yeah. I really enjoyed this really fucking dumb movie. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Dragon Ball, so, like, it is dumb, and it's fun by nature, but, like, I thought it was really good. Like, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, number seven, Between Two Ferns, the movie. I laughed pretty hard in this movie just because, like, it's Between Two Ferns. It's... It's a really dry, stupid sense of humor, and you can't help but laugh sometimes. Uh, number six, Avengers Endgame, End of an Era. Number five, Doctor Sleep. We talked about this in the podcast before. Number four, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. My favorite movie that I've watched while drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like Just ever or this year? Uh, ever. Like, <laughs> I, no. I don't think I've ever... That needs to be another top ten <laughs> list. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had more fun watching a movie drunk. And I think it's the first time I watched a movie in a theater while drunk. And Jesus Christ, it was incredible. Uh, number three, Rocket Man. Now we're into like the, you know, these are actually really good movies. Uh, <laughs> Took all the way to number three. Yeah. But it got there. Rocket Man was a really, really good movie. I really, really liked it. Um, number two, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I know this is going to be on your guys' list. Uh, very good movie. Really enjoyed it. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. Kind of enough said there. And then number one. I know this is a movie you guys have not seen, uh, despite how much I've encouraged you. <laughs> but par- I was considering it. I I would still recommend that you watch it. Like I don't think that much would be taken away from it, from watching it on the small screen. So if you ever get a chance, just seriously watch it. Um, Parasite. Parasite is so good. Such a good movie. I, I loved it. It made me so fucking stressed out. (laughs) Like, just a really anxiety-inducing movie. 
but it's so good. I don't. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't watch it because I remember your review being more mixed, and I think that's just because of how much you focused on how stressed out you were. Oh, oh, I, I did not so. mean to. If I portrayed it as like a so-so, or you like, probably didn't. Okay, you probably didn't. It was literally just my brain thinking like, nah, I think Andrew was like kind of mixed, and he thought that it was good, <laughs> but maybe not that good. Oh I don't know. no, I thought it. Was, I thought it was fantastic. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well. That might, probably would have been on my list, too. Oh, my no God. Well. <laughs> All right. Is it my turn? Go for it. All right. And then just just so you guys know, oh, man, I'm going to be super slutty <laughs> in this category. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> not, not as slutty as my games category, but, oh, man, this this movie category, it's going to be... Ryan's going to... be up to you, boys. Ryan's going to hoe out for this one. <laughs> oh, hell Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to I'm down to clown if it means getting some TV spots. Woo! Um, all right, but starting it off, number ten, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing fantastic, <laughs> but not bad. Um, I don't think I watched any movies this year that I didn't like. I was kind of picky and choosy, mm-hmm. so I made sure I guess to never watch any that I wouldn't like. Um, I saw Detective Pikachu in a weird place. I was in New York for our upfront presentation, which is kind of like the craziest time of the year. And I had one day off and it was pouring rain. So I walked to a movie theater with my umbrella and a backpack and then realized that like they let me into the movie theater with a backpack, which I don't think they're supposed to do. Um, Anyway, watch the movie. It was all right. (laughs) Number nine, American Factory, which is the documentary produced by... The Obama's Higher Ground pic- uh, Pictures Productions. Um, it was pretty good. It was interesting. It was a documentary. Uh, you know, I-, I thought that it would pull a little bit more punches. I was a little worried because of the Obamas, mm-hmm. you know, that maybe it would not be as uh, unfiltered. But no, it was. It didn't really pull any punches and left you wondering how anything like that could succeed. So it was interesting. Um, number eight, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. I'm a huge fan of Breaking Bad, and uh, it was a good, like, addition to the story. Like, we all knew what what kind of happened at the end of the series. Like, you kind of surmise how how uh, the rest of the story would go for Jesse and that character. Um, but it was it was kind of cool to get a look at it, especially so long afterwards. Um, number seven, Jordan Peele's Us. Uh, it was good. I didn't like it as much as um get out obviously but i thought it was a really good movie and he's definitely still got a lot of creativity in there just it's very clear to me that get out was much more of a passion project than us was so still good um number six between two ferns the movie um i don't know about you guys but at least for me i liked the segments a lot more mm-hmm. than like the movie oh, parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like the segments were just between two ferns and honestly, like some of my favorite moments of the between two ferns series. And I'm a big fan of that series. So it was, it was fun. It was a good watch and uh, worthwhile entirely. Did you um, number? F- did, oh, sorry. did you watch like the after credits scene where they go through like the bloopers and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was good too. Might have been better than the actual movie for me. That that was also great. Um, Just because I don't think we've ever seen him behind the scenes doing that bit. Because he's insulting all these people right to their faces. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like it would be really hard for me to keep a straight face (laughs) in that moment. So it was fun watching them all break and like the tension immediately evaporate. Because there's so much fucking tension (laughs) with those interviews. (laughs) So that was cool. Um, number five, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, it was it was classic. It was really great. There was some incredible moments that I think will be remembered in cinematic history long after comic book and superhero movies fall out of style. So that was cool. Um, number four, Fire, The Greatest Party That Never Happened. Now that is the Netflix documentary, not the Hulu documentary. Far superior. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing you guys. Just in case anyone was wondering, the Netflix one is better than the Hulu one. Um, but really good, really entertaining, crazy to hear about. And, um, I would say the difference is that the Netflix one focuses more on the party itself and the Hulu one focuses more on Billy, the lead organizer. Mm -hmm. So you actually got to kind of see a lot more of what the fuck actually happened (laughs) 
than the Netflix one, which made it great. Um, number three was Joker. Really, really good. You know, not much else to say. Met Joaquin Phoenix afterwards, which probably... <laughs> That'll give it an extra made bump. It, yeah, gave it a little bit of bump. It might have been four or five if it hadn't, <laughs> but who knows. It's on there as a result. Thanks, Joaquin. Um, number two, The Report, starring Adam Driver. I think I talked about it a little on the last podcast. Really good. Not a movie that you're going to be rewatching. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty fucking brutal. Uh, they do not pull punches, and it's a movie about torture. So there's that. Um, and then number one, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I really did like, but I feel like it was kind of a weird year for movies <laughs> that this ended up being my number one, because I don't think most years it would have been my favorite movie of that year, but you know, mm -hmm. still really good. And of all the movies that I saw, it's definitely the one that deserved it the most. So there you go. Um, all right, moving on to my top movies. Um, I also realized as I was putting this together that I only saw 10 released this year movies. Uh, so go. as such, my like bottom two are interchangeable, my middle five are interchangeable, and then my top three are interchangeable. Uh, <laughs> Tears. So this, is, yeah. this is not a top 10 list. Man. Yeah, this is, a, this is a B tier. <laughs> Starting with the B tier. Starting with the B tier. Number 10, Between Two Firms, the movie... Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I didn't like it as much as you guys. Uh, I mean, yeah, the segments were great. The end credits were great. And I am just such a Will Ferrell mark that any scene with him was awesome. Yeah. But that only compiles to maybe 35 minutes of a full length movie. And I didn't. It was pretty short, wasn't it? Eh. Wasn't it like an hour 15? Uh, yeah, I think it may have been an hour and a half, but. So no, that's not, not a long movie. So that's half a movie that I liked and the rest that I was indifferent to didn't really care for. And that's why it's number 10. Number nine, Avengers Endgame. Uh, yeah, Marvel movie. Big, big event thing. Definitely not your average no. Marvel movie. <laughs> it's, it's got well, a little it more did a little juice. something extra. Yeah. You really got to pump the gas when you want to <laughs> conclude a cinematic universe. I, it, it's not a conclusion, though. They're still making more. On most of those characters, it's a conclusion. Yeah, I, Starting the new phase. I, I, it was good, but it's like, yep, this, this is, well, yeah, this is what I signed up for. Um, number seven, wait, ten, nine, number eight, book smart. Eight, uh, A tier or B tier? Sorry. Uh, okay, is so. the start of the A tier? Yes, and then the top three are the s tier or whatever the s tier yeah uh book smart i watched it on a plane really good really fun really just interesting take on high school that i don't think has been in uh many movies before and i appreciated that um number seven actual number seven shazam best dc movie as far as i'm aware a lot of fun but also really kind of like there's a lot of heart in it, but also, like, it is people dealing with, like, some of the worst family stuff you can in life and getting through it. And it felt really, like, genuine in that regard, and I appreciate that. Uh, Steven Universe, the movie! TV movies count, because I say so. Um... <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> You're messing with fire. I'm slut. <laughs> Uh, this was good. This was, if you wanted to figure out just what the show is and why it's such a big deal to so, so many people, watch this movie and this is it. This is everything good about the show in an hour and a half. Um, uh, that will take me to, what is that, number five? Number five, Dragon Ball Super Broly. This is the best Dragon Ball media ever, maybe. It's fast paced, really fun, looks amazing. Really good anime movie. Uh, number four, Detective Pikachu. Um, I know it was kind of the selling point, but I think it is under discussed just how good this movie looks. Um, 
and I mean, I'm a total sucker for Pokemon, but I think the effects alone would get it somewhere on this list. Uh, okay, moving into the S tier, Doctor Sleep. Uh, I'm a pretty big Stephen King guy. Um, really liked both The Shining the book and The Shining the movie. Uh, I enjoyed the Doctor Sleep book, and then the Doctor Sleep movie is just kind of the best of everything of the weird shining book universe shining movie universe uh really nailed it and it sucks that it underperformed number two godzilla king of the monsters there we go Uh, i was not drunk when i saw this movie but by the end of it i was definitely drunk on this movie it (laughs) cool fucking blurb for your <laughs> reviews. <laughs> he, For your written reviews or he's something. He's been practicing that one since he saw it back over the summer. Yep, this is on the spot, man. This is my wit. Somebody pay me to write this. Um, I, it's a really fucking good giant monster movie, and we it don't is. have many of those anymore. We don't. <laughs> I, I dug it. <laughs> And it would be number one on my list, if not for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which, God, it was just Tarantino doing, like, making an entire movie about shit that maybe only Tarantino cares about on the level that he does. But it was good. And I, yeah, the pacing was weird. Yeah, looking back, maybe a lot of it was inconsequential. But if you told me there was going to be a mini series of these characters just dicking around and shooting the shit while watching Rick Dalton's TV shows, I'd be there for that. There you go. I love it. All right. These are our individual top 10 movies, but only 10 of them can be the podcast's top 10 movies And therefore, the definitive ranking of movies that came out in 2019. Everyone else is wrong. And now we're going to fight about it. Um, Andrew, kick us off. Um, all right. I'm going to say with number 10, let's put Between Two Ferns, the movie in there. Lucas, how do you feel? Um, It's number 10 on your list. I, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd be I'd be fine with that. Um, yes, I am also down. Andrew, why... Number 10. Why are you putting your number 7 movie at number 10? Easy one to start. Yeah. Uh, I, I th- also, don't mind this little tally that's going <laughs> under both of your names. That's not... That's totally not me keeping track of how many times I helped you both out in these other categories. Don't worry about it. Well, I am a what have you done for me lately kind of guy. So, I... Oh, I'll be doing things early and lately and <laughs> ever so rately. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing really that rhymes with that. Will Ferrell and Zach Galifianakis need to do more movies. If, if that is any takeaway I got from Between Two Ferns, is that both of them are still really good actors and comedians and need to be in more stuff. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, Ryan, you want to take the next one, or are we going to me on the rotation? I don't know. What are the rules? <laughs> there are no rules. It's chaos. Common law. Um, Ryan, take it away. You're number nine. All right, okay. it's me. I'm going to say Avengers Endgame. It's the number nine movie of 2019. What do y'all think? I think it should be higher. I would have been fine if it didn't make this list at all. I think it should definitely be on the list. Lucas, you, di- I don't you know didn't like Blade Runner 2049. Your opinion doesn't count. <laughs> Whoa, boy. Okay. You know what, folks? We were all friends at the start of this podcast. Jeez. Now I don't know if we can say that by the end of it. Uh, you know what? Yep, that should be that should be number nine on this list, if not number ten. Fair enough, even though you put it at nine. <laughs> well, th- yeah, you know, that's before I found out Andrew wanted it higher, and then he insulted me. So, well, I'm saying you put it at number nine, so shouldn't it be at nine? Like, right now, your list is perfect, Lucas. 
You have your 9 and 10 as the 9 and 10. <laughs> it's not good enough for him. Yeah, and it's due in no small part to me <laughs> as I not... tally the second favor in Lucas's category. <laughs> you know you can only, like, use that to guilt me, right? Like, I'm not... Oh, I'm gonna be guilting y'all so hard. <laughs> Guilt so hard, motherfuckers wanna find me. Um... Okay, number eight, then. Uh, this should be higher, but I know if we go much higher on this, I'm not going to be able to get it past either of you. And even now, it's going to be a long shot. Number eight, Steven Universe, the movie. Jesus Christ. Don't do it, Ryan. <laughs> You're testing my patience. I'm, I'm Ryan, I'm, I'm going to say no to this. Remember, you can no. say no to this, too. No! We have the I'm power. I'm so split. <laughs> Don't do Wait. it. Lucas is going to be so... Ma- so here's my dilemma, right? <laughs> Lucas is going to want some weeb shit on TV shows. Yeah, as it should just, be. But, but Ryan... No, no, there shouldn't but be. Ryan, there's no space. I'm, you know I hate weebs. I, I'll help you on the TV shows. Make sure that there's not going to be any weeb shit on there. Wow. Is that a is that a binding agreement to keep weeb shit off the TV list? I don't have any weeb shit on my list. <sighs> It's gonna be so steamrolly though, like last year, where <laughs> Lucas kept proposing weeb shit, and we kept saying And it no. was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was something. I think that took a few weeks to recover from in terms of podcasts. We, we had to take a little bit of a break from our friendship, agreed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that was about the time we stopped playing Fortnite together. <laughs> okay, that was... That was because that of was Fortnite, more... not because of us. I don't know. I think the weep shit really <laughs> tore a hole in the fabric of our relationships. I mean, um, are we allowed to break KFAB or are we committing to this? I, I think you got to commit. In that case, if there is not at least one piece of weeb shit on TV, I am just going to ruin this list at every opportunity <laughs> I can for both of you. Jesus. <laughs> Here, here, I don't know how you can. Here's the th- yeah, <laughs> it's gonna align again. Because <laughs> in the same, we need four hosts. Because as it stands, two can just bully the one. I can turn you two against each other. Even oh, in what? this video top games, 10. neither of us even have a full list. <laughs> what yeah. are you gonna do? Andrew has PUBG, which I'm curious to hear his explanation. It for had that. updates. <laughs> Oh wow! I it, allowed. Yeah, I talked to Lucas wow. about it earlier. He said updates Jesus are allowed. Jesus Christ! There's updates in everything. <laughs> Not really. Uh, um, Steven, Steven Universe, Universe the movie, the movie. Ryan. What you doing? I don't. I I feel like I'm trapped. Andrew, how mad will you be if it makes sense? I'm list? not going to be mad at you, but I'll just be fucking mad, man. You know it doesn't belong there. <laughs> wow! You haven't even know that. seen no. the movie. I think the first movie of mine that I 100% think belongs on there is Avengers Endgame. Like, my top five, I think, probably belong on there. With the exception of the report, because none of you have seen it. Um, But, like, I I don't really care about my bottom five. I don't don't know that it matters that much. Does Does it really matter to you that much, Andrew? That Steven Universe, the movie, isn't on there? Oh, man, you know I hate weep shit. It's not even you, you weeb got Broly shit. on there. It, that, it is you an do, Andrew. You are a weeb. Yeah. No, I am. Broly not. is way more weeby than uh, Steven Universe the movie. Dragon Ball is basically just WWE. And what? I wh- fight me. Uh, are you? Is that a diss on WWE or on Dragon Ball? It's not a diss on either. I'm just saying it's not that. It's not that weeby. Here's, so here's my question. I feel like I'm being pulled in two directions. And Andrew is evil and Lucas is good. And I don't know how am I which way I want to go. Well, this, I feel like I'm chaotic neutral in both of your true evil and true, new, and true good uh, sides of this. And I, I just don't know. Uh, I don't know how to act. Ryan, I'm trying to make this entertaining. I, Come on. Exactly. This is just going to be a repeat of last year, though. You guys can just see the 2018 top 10 if you want the bullies taking down the weed. Okay. <laughs> like, that's not Okay, it's fine. Steven Universe at 8 is fine. 
It's in. Lucas, it's in. Ryan was oh my, this entire oh my God. conversation just so you didn't have to say no so that I can't use that against you in television. Wait, did you just take one away from me, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, I, I I took away one of your favors because I realized how much I hurt you. So oh, okay. So you're 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 back down to zero. I have done you zero favors so far. Okay. I need to I need to earn a little bit of favor back. But I'm up to three on Lucas. <laughs> God. Lucas is your three slave. Lucas favors owned. <laughs> Lucas is my slave. Yeah, I think if oh, you get God. like five favors, then you pretty much own that person. That right? is the cost. That's just like the rule. It's five favors. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, what's number seven? Um, seven because. I, I, well, I, I won't even say a peace offering because I think it belongs on here. I think it should probably be a little bit lower, but I'll I'll put uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly at seven. <laughs> I feel like Dragon oh Ball God. Super Broly is a it's top two five movie. It's two spots. <sighs> Fine. Fine, I, I have, I'm... Yes! I'm no, wait, I said it first, yes! <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh! That's a favorite I, No, it It's no, unanimous, no. then! That's yeah, not a favorite unanimous. to anybody, that's, that's favorite. agreeing! You that's played zero part in this, you. <laughs> Yep, nope, I said yes, you heard it. Roll back the tape, and if it came after Lucas's, then that's because uh, the clap sync was off, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. That's a favor. <laughs> no, nope. That I'm... water bottle snap was strategic! I yeah. would put that as a zero... No, you can't. No, you can't edit. That's my square. Can I actually lock that square? I don't know. I can't. I, I, no, Google Drive. You've ruined it. Well, it's definitely not a favor to Lucas. It's not a favor for Andrew. Damn it. Um, number six, Ryan. Um. Oh shit! I haven't even been thinking about what I'm gonna propose. Um. Okay, you guys both didn't see this movie, but I think you can agree that it belongs on the list. Joker got pretty good at claim yeah i don't i don't, I don't think i'd fight you on it again i didn't see it um solely based off of your walking phoenix story i think it belongs on the list <laughs> I, the only pushback i have against it is that you made a really good case for why the joker is good a lot of people made uh, some really bad cases for why the joker is good and having it so high on this list is leaving a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth but I can't let shitty people liking a thing make me not appreciate good people liking a thing. So, okay. Yeah. And you also just watch it because it's good. <laughs> Lucas, you're, or Andrew, you're at negative one favors. <laughs> really, you owe really me. struggling. <laughs> yeah, I'm really struggling to. You're to like, oh man! By the time we're done with movies, I'm gonna own this board. <laughs> no, <laughs> Ryan's in debt. <laughs> It's a struggle counting these savers. Top five. That's what you got? Yeah, we're we're at the we're at the the real part now. Uh, we're in the real. end game. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Now it's which of mine do I kind of have to bail on to ensure that the other stuff I like gets in there? Um. Okay, this goes back to Andrew after, so I'm going to say Dr. Sleep for number five. Dr. Sleep is literally my number five. So Yeah, it's number five. Damn it, I can't cash in. (laughs) I'm going to say yes, because it sounds like a reasonable one. And it's Andrew's five, so I'm putting myself back to flat. Wait, no, how? <laughs> what? Why? Woo! Why? Because it's your number five. I just locked in your number five at no, five. What? No, you didn't lock it in. Lucas and I both yes, already I voted for it. No, you had you had not said yes. You just said that's going to be my number five. You didn't say yes. I was going to say yes. That one stays at zero. Um, what? Don't you dare. What? How? I took I took away one from myself when I didn't have to because I was being generous. Oh, oh thank you. So, my turn. I'm going to go. Yes. Gonna go, yeah, Andrew, like, you're up. going to go with uh, number four is uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Actually, wait. Yeah. Hold on. Wait. 
Hold on. Strategy. Hold on. We got on. four spots I left, I... Andrew. Yeah. I... You got to watch that real estate. Mm. I got to gauge the room. People are going to fight me on this. Uh, Rocket Man at number four. I think it deserves to be in the top five. I know you guys didn't see it. I'm asking you to take my word on this. Lucas, how are you feeling? I might be wrong on this, but didn't that movie kind of, kind of, kind of go over the fact that, like, not go over, just kind of ignore Elton John being gay for a lot of it? What? No, that was oh, okay. that was the main plot of the movie. <laughs> Am I confusing it with Bohemian Rhapsody think, then? Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah. I. Again, two biopics of incredibly famous musicians coming out at around the same time. Uh, the, like, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was basically just like a live concert movie. Rocket Man was a musical. You say musical yeah. kind of makes me want to drop it down a spot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, sure. Sure, Rocket Man for number four. I, I, uh, I, damn. Okay. I had a chance to earn some intrigue. <laughs> if Lucas would have said no, I could have curried favor. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know how powerful favor. We is. all know how powerful curry is. <laughs> <laughs> of the Steph variety. <laughs> he might not play again. You this want season. a big old bowl of Steph, Ryan? No, probably not. Um, Your number, th- my number three. It's already in Jesus. here. Jesus, I don't, I don't fucking know it. <laughs> I, once upon a time in Hollywood is too low for three. Right. The report. I don't think you guys will put it there, and I don't think it belongs there. I think Joker's already on the list. I think you know oh, which boy. one you have to pick if you want a curry favor, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Godzilla! Yeah! Godzilla! Oh. King of the Monsters! There we go. Number three. Hey, oh. <laughs> I put one that wasn't even on my list because I'm a good person. You know what? We'll give you. We'll, I'm not going to fight you on the favor for that one. One favor point for Ryan. <laughs> Two one each. favor point! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you've heard it here first. All right. I'm about to make some enemies. Oh. Parasite for number two. Enemies? I think Andrew would yeah, be. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. Oh, fortunate. Okay, like, then I hope you'll do the right thing and make the movie that should be number one, number one. The Irishman? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well... <laughs> Oh, so we have Parasite at two, and then... Uh, hold we, on, we have you have to, to respect the process. Andrew, okay. what is your suggestion for the number one movie? Andrew Clark, what saith thee for your nomination of the number one movie of 2019? Well, let me, here, here. Let me begin with a story. <laughs> Once upon a time like... in Hollywood... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. That was, that's not bad. <laughs> that was that was the story. I think all stories need to start at the beginning. <laughs> Three weeks earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I have it pulled up. Um, like I'm cool with this being our number one. Obviously, I had it as my number one, but. Do you think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is better than Annihilation? No. Yeah. Do you think it's... Oh, mm-hmm. go ahead. I, I was going to say no as well, but only because I recently re- rewatched Annihilation and it it made me feel just as strongly as it did when I saw it the first time. Do you so good. think Once Upon a Time is better than Sorry to Bother You? Yes. Okay. So, is it better than Spider Man into the Spider Verse? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm yeah strong. No. We were mo- oh, wait, more are you, contentious are you last at the, year. The 2018 list. I am. Yeah. Huh. Ah. Uh, see. I think it was better than Blade Runner 40, uh, 2049. Andrew's gonna say no to that. Ryan. 
I haven't seen it. How how okay. have you still not seen it? <laughs> He's not missing much. He knows that. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's not what I'm it's saying. It's my favorite movie. I don't know what to tell you, man. So then... I really, really don't. Okay, last year, which I think we're kind of in agreement, was maybe a better year for movies. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood would have gotten in the top three about. Sure. Yeah. Assuming that our system holds up. Yeah. We'll see about for me. I don't, I don't know how it would have for me. Hmm. All varies. All right, so... The Voluntary Viewing 2019 Top 10 Movies, which are the definitive rankings of movies for the year of 2019, are number 10, Between Two Ferns the Movie, number 9, Avengers Endgame, number 8, Steven Universe the Movie, number 7, Dragon Ball Super, Broly, number 6, Joker, 5, Dr. Sleep, 4, Rocket Man, 3, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, 2, Parasite, and number 1, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There you go. My entire top 5 is in the top 5 on this list. Wow. Seems like someone should... Add another favor point, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh, just, Lucas, just for... Oh, I have the points, oh, too. But all right. Uh, I was just going to say, for context for the viewers, the reason that we uh, made explicitly clear that there had to have been some sort of iteration of this coming out in 2019 is, if you remember, in the, 2018, in the 2018 <laughs> list, we had, like, games that came out in 2015 and 2016 on the list. I think I had Avatar The Last Airbender <laughs> on my top shows. Yeah. The, the game Legend of Korra, rough, to be fair. I remember. What, what to be fair? Although... Uh, Andrew, yours was, you had The Legend of Korra on your list. To be fair, but you also had The Office immediately below that, so... <laughs> Wait, Christ. did I? Pull it up, man. Or did I fucking I you, really? I, I'm sending you guys the doc again. <laughs> Andrew hates Hero Go himself. Oh, man. <laughs> He's oh. like, if I knew that guy... I, I know, I and remember more. why I put it there, because it was on in the apartment, living with the guys so much, and I had yep. never really seen The Office before. And I didn't really have many other shows that were new to me, but oh fuck you, Andrew! <laughs> <laughs> I even did the same uh, scoring method um, this year as last year. <laughs> That's interesting, Ryan. Good on you, buddy. Um, so at the end of the movies round, Andrew is in a commanding lead. With 50 points, I believe nearly all of his movies <laughs> made the top 10. Um, Connoisseur. Lucas in the, in the middle, in second place with 34 points. And Ryan pulling up the rear, as he does in these other two categories, with 18 points of the top 10. What is the next category, Lucas? Oh, fuck, we've been doing this for almost an hour. <laughs> Uh, I was about to say, do we want to do we want to take a break? Anybody have to use the bathroom, or are we rolling into the next one? I'm fucking I'm ready. ready. Okay, <sighs> Andrew, Ryan's just gonna curry more favor if we go to games right away. I think we have to go to. I think we have to go to shows. Yeah, we have to. We do have to do. No, <laughs> we, have we have to, to go to shows. I need my favor. <laughs> <laughs> Two thirds, no. Ryan. Sorry, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's not gonna be the last time We're you going hear that the today. Wrong way. <laughs> I totally pushed for movies so that shows could be last, and I could curry maximum favor. <laughs> um, God damn it! At least let me start. <laughs> I, if you start though, you're not gonna be happy with how this plays out. I think I'm gonna be. Happiest if I start. I fair enough. I'll I'll kick off games then. Ryan, what is? Yes. Oh no, we have to go through our list. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So whoops. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Ryan, why don't you? <laughs> I don't know. You started. Uh. Why don't you go ahead and go through your top ten? The <laughs> <laughs> definitive <laughs> top ten shows of 2019, Asterix. regardless of any other lists. Asterix. As I know, as the other lists end, this will be the definitive one. Barry so, Bond-style asterisk. <laughs> yeah. Nope, forget about all the other lists that are made for the rest of the year. Uh, number 10, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. 
I mean, come on, guys. That's just so <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> that is just so good. I don't give a fuck what you say. That is incredible late night television. Leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else. Uh, number nine, Rick and Morty. Come on, guys. The season's been amazing. You guys know it. <laughs> I know just it. Pulling the hard sell on fucking really good. <laughs> really good. You guys know it. Rick and Morty belongs on this top ten list. There's no doubt. Number eight, Russian Doll. If you don't like this, you don't like women's empowerment. I'm just throwing down the bottom. Right you guys are both not feminist if you don't put Russian Doll on this list. So, you know, it's fine. Are we not if feminist if we don't just, like it at the number eight spot on that list? Just, or? just want it on the record that Russian Doll belongs on the list. That's okay. fair. You know, otherwise, you're not a feminist. It's fair. No, don't worry. Um, Natasha Leone, she's fantastic. Just Okay, that it. we all can agree um, on. Yes. Number seven, The Crown. Another one that you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that you're a uh, you're a royalist Nazi <laughs> if you don't if you don't put the show in the top ten. But like uh, you know, Crown's an important show, and they they took a huge risk in having to recast all of their cast because it's such a groundbreaking show that they need to show seventy years of history. <laughs> um, really good, fantastic. Number six, The Boys, which you guys would like, but you haven't watched yet. I know. Um, really, really, really fucking good. We're getting to the part where like I'm gonna die if these parts, if these shows don't get on the mm. list, because all of these shows are incredible. Um, really, really fucking good, guys. Superheroes, it's great. Number five, Watchmen. Oh my god, I I unfortunately did not finish the season before this show, but or before this podcast. But if I had. It might have gone up even higher. This shit is so good. Like, it is crazy good. And I think I'm just getting to the part where it's getting crazy, crazy good. So, it's at five. But honestly, by the end of the time I finish this season, it might go all the way up to, like, two. It's so good. Um, really recommend it. Please watch it. Even if even if for some reason something possesses you to not put it on the list. Um, number four, Mindhunter. Andrew knows. This shit's real good. I know. It's fantastic. It's a great watch. Nothing else to be said for it. Number three, Veep. The funniest show I've ever seen in my entire life. I cannot stop laughing. I've rewatched this show now twice. I'm not a big rewatcher. Oh my fucking God, is it (laughs) hilarious. It is so funny. And just everyone on it is a treasure. The cast is incredible. Probably the greatest comedy cast I've ever seen assembled. Um, So good. Number two, Barry. Y'all know. Nothing needs to be said. It's fantastic. It is the best show of 2019. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because that is Chernobyl, <laughs> which is actually the best show of 2019. And a show like it will probably never come again. And it came, made history, won awards, kicked ass, and then left. And if that's not a great legacy, I don't know what is. And it's utterly fantastic in every way, shape, and form. Would you say Chernobyl is better than Band of Brothers? Oh, you're asking me to pick between golden, golden television. I know. I, I don't know. I know. They're both unbelievable. Okay. They're they're both to the point that it's just must watch. And so same same tier can't be same beat. tier at least. Oh yeah, no, they're 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 pretty much dead even. In that, they're just both fantastic. I would say Chernobyl is more consistently good. Because I would say Band of Brothers starts a little slow. And then once they actually like get into the war type scenarios, shit gets real quick. But Chernobyl from frame one is like, oh fuck. This is incredible. So, there's that. My top ten TV shows <laughs> for 2019. The ultimate definitive list. <laughs> <laughs> the definitive ist list the alpha and the omega of top 10 2019 tv show lists uh number 10 final space um i think i enjoyed the season less than i did the previous one but god when it was good it was really good um andrew i think you can attest to that i i can attest i again like i don't think i liked it as much as season one but its highs were, I would say, just as high, but there were a lot more lows. But still, like, really good. Cannot wait for season three. 
Uh, number nine, Tigtone. Tigtone is fun, irreverent, uniquely animated, and just... Uh, I don't know. It, 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 <laughs> there are no other shows like it, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, number eight, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, part five, Golden Wind. Uh, once again, beautiful animation, terrific character design, lots of fun characters. The English dub is airing now. Uh, cast perfectly. Uh, some of the best fights in JoJo's, some of the best themes, and it's really good. Uh, number six, Steven Universe slash Steven Universe Future. Once again, really great, fun, unique, and just, I don't know, Steven Universe is so fucking queer, and it's amazing, and I... I hope after they finish Steven U Universe Future, there's like a fucking Steven Universe GT or something just to get the series going. I had to clear my throat there. And number six is Epithet Erased. Uh, this is a really fun animated series on Verve by YouTuber, uh, YouTuber and animator uh, Brendan Blaber, uh, also known as Jello Apocalypse. A lot of fun, a lot of heart. Um... Obviously, a lot of inspiration from a lot of uh, shows and games that I care a lot about. So it's kind of definitely definitely a show engineered to my taste. Number five, Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. Uh, or I guess the entirety of the series. I don't know if we ever decided how we're doing this exactly. Um, there's just so much going on in this show. Super fast-paced, a lot of themes, a lot of ways to interpret what's going on, what the characters are supposed to represent, what they're going through. Definitely a show where everybody can watch it and take away something that... Take away something from it and definitely experience something that feels close to home for them. Number four is Primal, which... Fuck, Gendy Tarakovsky can really make good TV, and he did with Primal. The, nobody utters a single word over the course of this, uh, I think, six-episode show, and I know exactly who the main character and his uh, dinosaur best friend are. Number three, Rick and Morty. I... Maybe I should lower this because they did kind of break their rule about time travel in the most recent episode, but... That was a great episode. It though. was a great episode, though. I don't even care that much. Yeah, they totally <laughs> earned it. Uh, <laughs> there was a fucking, fucking time travel snakes. That's all I gotta say. Number two, Russian Doll. Uh, I... Can't believe this came out at the top of the year. It feels like that was both forever. Russian Doll is such a good show. Is It feels like it's always been around. And that's why it's in the number two spot. And then number one. Come on, you guys. Barry? Barry, Barry is the best show of 2019 that I've seen that I think anybody in the world has seen. Ever. It's the best movie or the best uh, TV show that I've seen this year. But it's a short what list. Chernobyl. <laughs> what are some of the other shows that yeah. had some kind of release this year that you've 10? seen this year, Andrew? Yeah, <laughs> How's your top ten shows? Here are the top... No, no, that's not right. Here are the six shows that I've oh. seen in 2019. <laughs> Ranked from worst to best? Yes. <laughs> Dude... <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Good Omens, a really good show that none of you guys would give a chance because you're fascists. <laughs> Whoa. And it's worse than Game of Thrones <laughs> this season, which we hated. I, Everyone hated. I don't agree that it is actually worse than Game of Thrones, but I put it on there because... You put it on there as worse than Game of yeah. Thrones? Because <laughs> I know how much you hate so. it. Number five, Game that? of Thrones. A just fucking awful final season. <laughs> God, seasons, seasons one through four though. Yeah, uh, 
legendary a- as a whole if you just average out every episode of game of thrones really good i mm, i i feel like season six territory that show got a lot more mediocre than what people wanted to admit i, I but. still think season six was pretty good um yeah. season five had it was like hot or cold there was a lot of really good and a lot of really bad and then season yeah season seven was the beginning of the end anyway number four <laughs> final space i <laughs> A show that also had a lot of hot and cold. A lot of hot and cold. Pretty good and some pretty bad. Um, Number three, Rick and Morty. A show so good that I have not seen the most recent episode of. Uh, Time mm. travel. I've had... That we were referencing. I've had some uh, issues with my TV provider. So logging in to see it online has not been easy. And I know I can... It's on Adult Swim now. You can go to their website and watch it there. Yeah, but you need to have your TV provider log in. Because that's where I have been watching it. But just some login issues. Right. Um, number two, Mindhunter. Excellent. Great. I watched both season one and two in 2019. It took me longer than it should have because I watched it in spurts. I'd binge, like, two or three episodes and then not watch it for a few weeks. Um, really, really good. Just Ryan knows. Ryan, you know. You know. Um, and yeah. number one, the best show of 2019, hands down. No one on this podcast will dispute it. Uh, Barry. <laughs> you guys didn't fucking watch Chernobyl. And then you trash it. <laughs> By saying that Barry is oh, better. So not, no. you not not watching a show that a friend has highly recommended. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Ryan, I you have might recognized have that these are good movies and have put them on the lists. I have in no way, shape, or form said that they don't belong. You anyway. might have catered favor with the wrong person, sir. Wow, that's good to fucking know, Lucas. <laughs> I curried a lot of favor with you because I, I I split my bets thinking that Andrew would have my back with some weeb shit, no matter what, because Andrew's anti-weeb. I, I am, and I do. But, yeah, so we'll see. Also, before I start with the number 10 show, I just want to list off a bunch of honorable mentions. <laughs> oh my god. That I do think also belong, just in quick rapid fire, I'm not going to explain anything about them. Uh, Letter Kenny, Bojack Horseman, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Silicon Valley, The Good Place, The End of the Fucking World, Our Planet, A Series of Unfortunate Events, Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, Black Mirror, I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, Saturday Night Live, and Big Brother. Woo! Saturday Night Live has been good this year. I'll give you that. It has. Nah. It's been fantastic. So, there you go. Ooh, I should also say, well, 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 we're, well we're doing a little bit, little bit of a break here. Um, uh, number one manga of 2019, Chainsaw Man, hands down. If you want to hear about that, you gotta get our premium subscription tier, which is just mailing us a check for $100. <laughs> and then you'll talk about Chainsaw. Lucas, I know that you and I don't have a, a mutual favor column, but I want you to know that you owe me a favor now. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, it sounds like it's you and I splitting that hundo, or however many hundos come in. How, it however like... many hundos, several hundos. Yeah. <laughs> several hundos. Um, I'm giving it to you, Lucas. That's the number one manga. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put that right in the curry favor it's category. It's not a favor <laughs> Plenty of if spices. it's yeah. nothing for you to say it. It requires someone to approve, otherwise it is not the number one manga. Oh, my own rules coming to bite yeah. me in the ass. So I approved it, and that is one favor. The one petard anyway. I never thought I'd be hoisted by. <laughs> How weird is it that we don't have BoJack Horseman on any of that, our lists? I literally had it, and then the Watchmen jumped it, and then I, I just I couldn't. It, it's number 12 for me. It is it is barely missing this list. Um, great season, but so much fucking good TV out there. Um, all right, let's kick it off, boys. Number 10, last week tonight with John Oliver. <laughs> it's the 10th best show this year. Come on. Andrew, you don't even have no, a 10. I'm, that's why I haven't said you anything. I'm not arguing. <laughs> Andrew, I feel like we... 
unanimously say yes to this one, he can't be upset about when we inevitably say no to one of his picks. Or we could tell him that we would fight him on this and then use up a favor. <laughs> the oh, favors no, are means... meaningless. He invented that, that those. One one favor's coming my way every time you guys burn me. Just no, so you we're know. we're not gonna burn you. I'm I'm good. I'm good with last week tonight. At number 10. It's a good show. And you've all watched it. I know you yeah, have. Maybe not this year, but you've definitely yeah, seen it. Very it's good. good. Okay. And an important show. Of all these top 10s, that's like the number three most important show. <laughs> what's what's number list, two? Please. I don't know. <laughs> Chernobyl's up I there. I know Chernobyl's number Chernobyl's one. Chernobyl's probably one. I don't fucking know. Russian Doll. That's a good, important show for women and stuff. I don't the Boys. <laughs> Rick, Rick and <laughs> Morty. <is> interesting. <laughs> Tick Oh, boy. What do we got for nine, Lucas? Even though I think it should be higher, I know if I don't get it in now, I'm never going to be able to. Uh, Steven Universe, Steven Universe Future for number nine. <laughs> Andrew? <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> I think I am. Are we powers activated? <laughs> Stamp of no. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm burning all five favors on that one. All right. That's a no. All right, Andrew. Now it's on you. Are you about to take your number three show and drop it down to the number nine spot? It would make sense. I would say I to put that. To I'm gonna try nine. to curry some favor with the two of you. Actually, I'm gonna say uh, maybe you'd find me in this Russian doll. I don't think so. Show that I've never seen, but I hear that you would like it if you're a feminist, and I am one. I I'll say yes. Oh wow! It's there, number nine. Slightly low, but it belongs on the list, and that's about right. Russian doll it is, and your favor has been curried, fine sir. We will see. I am relatively inflexible in this category, <laughs> but top games, you will have a friend indeed. Um, number eight, it's Ryan's turn. You're in an and there's odd an position obvious now. Choice. Rick and Morty. <laughs> Why not? Why? Yes! <laughs> the list is coming out pretty close because Russian Doll and Rick and Morty are honestly pretty damn neck and neck. So I'll take them as swapped. I love it. I love it. What you got, Lucas? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> and I know what me and Andrew are thinking. <laughs> Didn't have to be this way, Lucas. Um. But I heard that I curried favor with the wrong person. You did. Good Omens is the seventh best movie of oh, uh, no. show of 2019. Oh, no, you what, did what not. What a twist! No, Andrew, you know it doesn't belong. <laughs> you know it doesn't belong. Completely off guard. <laughs> Andrew, you know it doesn't belong. Ryan. You monster. Ryan. You monster. Ryan, I swear. Lucas, what have you I done? Ryan, Andrew, remember how much fun you and Jade had watching this? Ryan, I swear f- I still no. have your back for the rest of the TV shows. No, Andrew. Don't you? No, you know it doesn't no, belong. No, no, that, that's I don't the care thing, how much Ryan, fun. Ryan, is that I think it does belong. Good Omens is a good show no. that you just would not give a chance. Again, it is I don't, not a top 10 show. I don't show. want to fight about this. <laughs> Google everyone else's top 10 TV shows. I dare you. And if you find a single one with good omens on it, I will be fine with this. But there is not a single person who puts this in their top 10 shows of 2019. It's, it's wrong and you know it. Andrew, you are a person and you did put it in your top 10 shows. Be he, proud. He Express didn't. yourself. It's below the worst season of a television show that everyone loved. You know it, Andrew. Do the right thing. Andrew, your, your favor. Is this really <laughs> what you want? 
Ryan, I still got your back. I, st- <laughs> I still true. got your back. You realize Lucas is going to steamroll video games if this happens. What? No, he's not. It's like... you. Yes, he. Oh, yes, How? he will. <laughs> Luke, Lucas has 10 video games, first of all. Ryan, <laughs> so <laughs> Ryan, Good Omens deserves to be on this list. No, you know it doesn't, yes, it though. Does. That's the thing. You're being meme You're being meme and that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> meme But, like, you you know the show is not that meme-y. good. Yeah, be- like, what sure, does meme mean? Meme. Oh, meme. Memetic. What? No, meme-y. like, I really liked Good Omens. It's a really enjoyable, fun no. show. That's what people say when they don't think something is that good, <laughs> but they're kind of trying to defend their what? opinion. Like, it was enjoyable. I don't know. <laughs> good Omens at number seven. Oh, my fucking yeah. God. The you poison. Had, you had to keep fighting me at Good Omens, man. Et tu brute. There was nothing that was going to happen. I couldn't have stopped you. <laughs> Lucas has zero. No, he has one. He has three points. Or, no, he got Russian Doll, too. He's actually doing okay, Andrew. Not only... <laughs> Not only did he split you, but he also is actually beating you in terms of points. Is this what you wanted? Good old memes. I get it. Ryan, I guarantee that Lucas, I'm in physical Lucas pain. will not <laughs> gain points on the rest of the TV shows. I'm in physical pain. What's five, What's six, Andrew? No, that, oh yeah, that's back to Andrew. Shit. Okay. Um, okay. I, just just by math, I'm gonna have to go with one that's not on my list. Uh, number six, I'm gonna go with the boys. That's that's the correct answer. Yes, <laughs> it will go to number six, and you have curried a little bit of favor back. Of course, I was trying to decide if I was gonna go. But with the crown I will never forget. Boys. I will never forget the uh, the disservice. Unfortunately, I've I've forgiven you. Andrew. But you haven't forgotten. I've forgiven you. I will never forget. For- I've forgiven you, but you know I will never forget. And that's fine. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no- number five, everyone. Y'all seen it. Y'all love it. It's Watchmen. It's really fucking, re- like, really fucking good. I really recommend that you guys watch this. I give us, that's give us your like- HBO password. <laughs> I Actually, I do have one, yeah. It's my family. All right. Now. It, well, I was using Ian's, but now my family does have an HBO. I think Watchmen is going to be the show I binge while I'm at my folks for Christmas. I think we're pretty much part of the Holt family. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, my mom still listens to this podcast, so maybe she'll give me permission. <laughs> because it'll lead to interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this is Holt. If you donate to our Patreon, you can pick the show we watch on HBO, and then we'll oh, talk about it. What if we did it. that as a bit? Like Ryan's <laughs> mom's topics that she sends in. <laughs> yeah, she's not a Patreon donor. I, I asked her today. It is the 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 two uh, donors that we currently have that Lucas will give a shout out to at the end of the show. What? what? Neither of them, my mother. So there you go. We haven't convinced her yet. We got to step it up, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's still on the fence, guys. I don't know. She's. She's really into that sort of thing. Hey, um, I don't want to insult your mom, but if you pay enough money, I will. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, Lucas, what's what's your nomination for four? You monster. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, shit. I actually don't know. Uh at this point, I'm kind of betting against you, Ryan. Um, There's no reason to bet against me. I am inevitable. You're a Donald Trump campaign ad? Yeah, Jesus Christ. That's that's going on the topics for... No, oh, God, we, we no! We talked about it already. We're not going to be able to talk about... Oh, did we? Oh, that's right. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> thought that was my other podcast. <laughs> um i'm gonna say russian doll for number four yeah i guess it did no it did. wait it's already on there it's wait fine. is it oh fuck in that yeah, case I was wait, oh god i actually have no idea what to pick then fuck yeah, rick and morty's on there too wait what did you uh, pick ryan you cut out for a second that's lucas's pick ah uh, yeah 
He picked Russian Doll first, but it's on there. And then he said Rick and Morty, but that's on there. I know you guys aren't going to give it to Primal. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can just you can just pick the the real number four. That's fine. I kind of want to say Veep just to fuck with you. Uh, That'd be fine. Mind Hunter and Veep were pretty interchangeable. Um, Veep is more legendary. Veep will have a longer run, but that's fine. Uh, man. Um. Hmm. Mm, Mind Hunter. I'm fine with that. Here we go. Number four. It is so. I I wanted I wanted if, to say that Mind Hunter is the... at four is too low, but again, like I don't Watch I don't have shows. enough shows to be like <laughs> and you've poisoned enough frame of this near perfect list. You've poisoned this near perfect list. You put it above Rick and Morty, a show that you objectively know is better. <laughs> That's to you then, Andrew. Yeah, what's three, Andrew? I think there's a there's an obvious three. Veep. Yes. God, Julia Louise Dreyfus is a yes. treasure. Yes. We do not deserve her. She's so great. Ugh. Unbelievable. What's the um... Veep three? Let's do it. What's the uh, name of the actor who plays Buster in Arrested Development, who's also in... Oh, it's um, Gary... No, Gary's his character's name, Gary Walsh. Um, it's Tony Hill. Is he... I... He's unbelievable in that show. I, he's so tied to the character of Buster for me, though. Does he... Oh, no, he's... I think in the mind of... In the eyes of the public, he's more tied to the character of Gary. Really? Okay. Yeah. Like, he, he's done monologues as Gary because he's so recognized as Gary. And he, he's won Emmys for that role. Like, he's incredible. It's unbelievable. All right. I, I know that this show, for me personally, was not number one, but our, uh, was, yes, was not number two, but I am willing to be a sacrificial lamb and throw Chernobyl uh, under the metaphorical bus as number two as a sacrifice to make sure that it, belong it takes its rightful spot near the top of this list chernobyl is too look at us the pr prisoner's dilemma can be solved who will who will join me i'm i'm good with that oh my god <laughs> i can't believe i almost fucking pulled it off but lucas i was <laughs> poisoned the well <laughs> intentionally I almost pulled off all my top ten. Ryan, I was going to give you Chernobyl as number one, but okay. Oh. No, I think that this is a fair right. fair trade. Um, You would have nominated Chernobyl at one? I, if it fell that way, you know? I, wow. I don't know. I mean, it was your pick, and I figured it would be a safer pick to go with Chernobyl since you don't have it, and then get Barry at, at one. So what's, what's your formal nomination, Lucas DeRider, for the number one TV show of 2019? The number one TV show of 2019, in my humble but correct opinion, mm, no. is no. Barry. Now I'm regretting doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not correct, but that's fine. Come on, man. We'll Barry. I... <sighs> you haven't seen Chernobyl. <laughs> you don't know how good it is, man. This shit's incredible. Does it have a high police officer with a broken neck breaking a cop's neck with a karate kick? No, but it has human bulldozers. <laughs> Wait, Which of course, like are human beings dressed up in radiation suits removing incredibly radioactive material two minute in two minute shifts at a time because any longer and they would die and they can't put any robots up there otherwise the robots would malfunction due to the insane radiation. So there's that. That's in Chernobyl. <laughs> it's incredible. It's so fucking Sounds good, you like guys. It. And it's all real. It's all really all happened. All right, tally up those scores. So is, I'm tallying so is them Bill points. Bill Hader pretending to be bad at acting. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. 
<laughs> it's good. It's really good. I'm not arguing with you. I just think that this other one was better. You're, you're, you're arguing a little bit. Show us the points. Andrew is 24. Ryan. what? Wait, what show got left off then? The Crown? Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Take it. I guess I'm better not gonna... The Crown than The Boys, but... It's still sad. I'm going to come clean, Ryan. I have no fucking clue what the crown is. Oh, really? Yeah. That's the the Queen Elizabeth biopic show. Oh, wait. I thought that it's was a her movie. her entire reign. No, it's a show on Netflix. Huh. Yeah, it's incredible. It's, it's documenting her entire life, like from when she ascended until the present. So the first two seasons used one actress, and now these next two seasons are using a different one, and then the last two seasons are going to use yet a third actress to play her. The whole cast has to be recast because the show is set over like 70 years. So this was the first season with the new queen, who was Olivia Colman, who's played the queen, like different queens Mm. a lot. So Cool. That's commitment. It was a big, big deal. Ryan, how many points you got? And it still worked out. I'm sorry, I'm doing it. I was explaining. 51... One more point than Andrew in movies. So that actually shows really how dominant Andrew was in the movie category. That I had everything except for one uh, lower tier score on there. Um, And then Lucas had... (coughs) That sounds about right. Oh, that was Andrew sneezing? Ah. No, no, that, that was my point total. Wait, is that it? Is it just... No, wait. Um, 10 plus... Then you had Rick and Morty, 3 plus Russian Doll, 2. You had 15. Because you fucking poisoned the well. (laughs) That's what you get for poisoning the goddamn well. You put on a suicide vest of poison and blew your chances in the shows. You You did worse than I did in movies. And I was slutting it up with the best of them. Bring on right. the poison. <laughs> <laughs> on to games. Okay, I'm gonna ask that we pause it here for a second. Um, I don't don't, don't actually, actually pause, recording. pause recording. Well, no, 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 Just no, no. Leave it going um, in that. Okay. So, definitely want to request that this is taken out of the final podcast. I will be back in a couple of minutes. Jade is currently getting sick with food poisoning. Oh boy. Oh yeah, Jesus. I'm. I'll be back in a little bit. And I'll let you guys know when I return. All right. I'm going to grab the bathroom then. Cool. I'll be here on a hot mic. Try not to say anything legally or socially incriminating. Not going to drop a racial slur because I am not an e-celebrity. I'm digging around. I was doing ASMR. Oh. Yeah. That's creepy. I think you need one of those, like, binaural microphones to properly pull that off. Oh, damn. How's your fantasy team looking for the championship against Andrew? Um, let's see. Um, right now with my shitty defense, I am projected for 117. And Andrew is projected for 125. I don't know if he's moved anybody around yet, but uh, going to be close at the very least. Which, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. This team is so fucking ridiculous. I mean, by all accounts, though, you should have murdered me. I should. I abs- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I should have beaten you. 
I, but my team did terribly, as did yours. I. <laughs> and Andrew scored 170 points. Andrew double, almost doubled your score yep. last week. I don't know. I don't know. I. It's a rough one. If Ryan. Ryan, if anyone could shoot themselves in the foot in the finals. It's Andrew. I think so. That would be kind of bad, actually. I don't think I want that to happen. This I team has been ridiculous all year long. I don't either. I didn't expect to get this far. I'm just happy to be in the money. Yeah, you're but... making money this year. Oh, if I'm the dark horse and go on to win the championship, I'm never going to let him live it down. Yeah, that would be kind of brutal. Oof, what about this cuck bowl? Man. Ooh, uh, and Sam. who's in? Ian and Sam. Oh, I hope it isn't Ian. <laughs> right now they are projected even. So, there is that. A small part of me also wants Andrew and I to both tank in the championship match and that both people in the cuck bowl score higher than us. Yeah, I ju- reasonable. Chaos. Chaos. Yeah. Any uh, any plans when you're back home for Christmas? I'm going to Florida. Oh, so okay. Beach. I hopefully hopefully it's warm enough. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Uh, relatives down there, or just a thing your family does? Uh, no, my family bought a condo. Ooh, nice. Down there a couple years ago. A couple years back. So. Yeah, it's a great investment until it's underwater. No. Not, not my investment. <laughs> that is for them to worry about, I suppose. So, yeah. I don't know. You got any plans? Um, no. Uh, probably on Monday, catch a train to Milwaukee. Uh, then... From there, my uh, dad's going to be around there anyway, so I could ride back home with him. Uh, I guess I wouldn't mind running a car for the week, but, I mean, I take a train up. I can work while I'm on the train and also save the money I would have spent on a car. Uh, Monday night, actually, uh, going to try to catch the Packers game with Andrew. Um, <laughs> that might be fun to see. <laughs> Yeah. To see the fantasy football championship play out while we're in the same room. Uh, that does sound kind of fun. Yeah, and then, like, uh, usual family stuff uh, for Thanksgiving. Um, I think we're going to try to catch uh, Uncut Gems on Christmas Day. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Sandler. Yeah. It, it's supposed to be really good. And I guess my family and I have kind of fallen into that tradition the past couple of years, catching a movie on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. I no idea how that happened, but don't mind it. Uh, and then probably back in uh, Chicago, like uh, Friday morning or so. There you go. Sounds like a full vacation. Slash, you know, workcation. Depending on how crazy it gets, I guess. We poisoned somebody at the bar the other day. Oh. That's good. No. No. No, it was not. That's that's not good. Um, they have a chicken sandwich on the menu. Has avocado on it. They ordered without avocado because they have an allergy, and oh. their sandwich had avocado. Oh boy. Yeah. That's um. Not good. Are you getting sued or something? Can thankfully, no. And they're gonna be okay. They had to run out of the restaurant to grab a Benadryl, but. Uh, Definitely comp that meal, and I, 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 we are already implementing better policies to keep that from happening again. Yeah, damn. Yeah. Was it on the cook, or did the server forget to write it down? Or We're not totally sure. That's fun. It, it, it was on the ticket, no avocado, but we're not sure if the kitchen missed that, if, uh, like, Expo uh, lining up food, miss that or what? But it's hmm. doesn't really matter whose fault it is, so long as we make sure it never happens again. What what happened? What did I miss? Nothing. Just avocados. 
All right, ready I, to wrap this up and get back yeah. to Jade. <laughs> Feel bad now. It, what did she eat? Scallops. Oh, yeah. Oh. Again, this does this doesn't make it into the podcast. No, oh, no. Obviously. No, I I had a couple of heated gamer moments during the uh, intermission. So, that's all that's all going to the cutting room floor. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to do what is known as a pro gamer move. Um, did we list the top 10 of uh, TV shows? We did like, not. So I'm going to snap the and then uh, Ryan, do you want to run through those? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. And we are back in three, two. All right. Everyone get back into character. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I'm trying to remember my. Uh, my I'm psychology. Ryan, and here is <laughs> that was, the list. There was mention of that. Um, so we have our final top ten TV shows of 2019, and just as a reminder, all of you, fuck your own list. <laughs> uh, this is the definitive version, um, with one exception, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, number ten, last week tonight with John Oliver. Number nine, Russian Doll. Number eight, Rick and Morty. Number seven, Good Omens. Uh, <laughs> number six, The Boys. Number five, Watchmen. Number four, Mind Hunter. Number three, Veep. Number two, Chernobyl. And number one, Barry. And with that, we go to games. Okay, I think it is my turn to kick this off. Do we want to list our pathetic lists first uh that's what i meant i will go through Uh, the first of our three complete totally filled out uh top 10 lists of video games i play a lot of games just not new ones apparently (laughs) don't know why um my number 10 fire emblem three houses uh really good story with great characters in it i wish the difficulty curve actually existed so i wasn't steamrolling through levels and not getting any sense of fulfillment and was actually inspired to finish this game but yep number 10 number nine travis strikes again no more heroes this is a fun spin-off game and even if it's a little more limited graphically uh in terms of uh, like game design in terms of combat um, and has a shockingly scant amount of voice acting. Still terrific writing, still a fun game, and definitely deserves to be in my top 10. Number eight for me is Shovel Knight. Minutes before going on this podcast, I finished the latest and final campaign for this game that came out in 2014. Uh, Shovel Knight, King of Cards, and I said it before, but Shovel Knight is going to be a game that defines this decade of gaming. Proved that the Kickstarter financial model is a viable one and has just been killing it with the creative freedom that that kind of uh, business model allows. Number seven, Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's Pokemon on a Switch. It has a really fun art direction, despite what Piss Babies Online will say. I enjoy it. <laughs> um, number six, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. six. <laughs> Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. Uh, another Kickstarter game. Um, it's a weird Metroidvania. There's a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reference at... Well, there are a couple of them, but the last fight is... Yep, just one giant reference to that terrific anime. Uh, I enjoyed this. Number five, River City Girls. This is a really well-made beat-em-up game. With it, It's fun to play, and the writing and characters are terrific. Uh, would probably be in my top three if the ending weren't so fuck-damn awful. Uh, number four... Wait, uh, number... One, two, three. Number four, Cadence of Hyrule. Really fun game. Absolutely terrific music. Should have got music. Uh, should have been. Should have gotten the award for music at the Game Awards, but it didn't because, yeah. But 
really good, really great Zelda game, even though it wasn't made by Nintendo, and I hope the success of this game encourages Nintendo to let other people take a crack at their, uh, at their IPs. Um, number three, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Only in a year where there was a remake of Link's Awakening could Cadence of Hyrule be the second best Zelda game of the year. Uh, Link's Awakening is terrific and really, I don't know, melancholy kind of, but also cutesy. And it's a weird mix of just depression and finality, but also really saccharine. So I'm still thinking of all the themes that are in that game. Uh, Number two, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's... Uh, the best Smash Bros. game. It's absolutely killing it. There's more content coming out, and the content that came out this year was spectacular. Definitely my number two. Um, has been a blast that uh, now that more people that I know have a Switch and I can play it with more people. That is just spectacular. And then number one, Death Stranding. I... <sighs> I don't know. I feel like I played a lot of video games this year, and Death Stranding is the one that I'm still thinking about a lot, and processing, and digging into, and even if kind of the story and the themes of the game are more obvious, I think, than what a lot of the marketing made it out to be, it's it's good. It is... Definitely Hideo Kojima at his freest and most unhinged. And that is exactly what I was looking for from this game. What do you guys got? Andrew. All right. So uh, (laughs) up to you how you want to frame it. Yeah. Preface a few things here. Uh, The first three entries on my list only technically qualify because I not played very many video games that came out this year uh the first three are games that i played a little bit of uh number 10 cod modern warfare i played the beta and i count just a little yeah just just the beta played a couple hours of that uh number nine warframe i played like three hours of warframe a couple months ago it's all right I you were <laughs> still figuring it out when I was like with you. Yeah, when you were no, I still it. don't understand. That's why I stopped. Uh, number eight, <laughs> River City Girls, because in the same instance where Lucas came over, I had thrown my back out and was immobile. He brought his Nintendo Switch. <laughs> it made me play River City Girls <laughs> for like twenty minutes. You enjoyed and, and that I did. Game. I did enjoy it. I played like twenty minutes of River City Girls, and I enjoyed it. You downloaded that on your... You can play that yeah, now but I didn't. if you wanted to. <laughs> I downloaded it, but I never played it again. <laughs> Number seven, Plank. <laughs> Number six, <laughs> Plank. Hold on. Are you going to quantify why you <laughs> decided to... Why is River City Girls number eight and not number seven or number because six? Because I played 20 minutes of it. <laughs> like, a, Like, I also... Like, I debated putting Yoshi's Crafted World on here because I went to Target and played it for 10 minutes in the tech section. <laughs> Jesus. But I... <laughs> but, like, I didn't play enough out of any of the these games to actually say, like, yep, this is my opinion on this game. Um, number five, PUBG. It qualifies because it had some updates and added a new map and... Some stuff like that. It entered season, whatever. Who cares? Uh, number four, Red Dead Redemption what, 2. Wait, what is, what is PUBG like in the year of our Lord 2019? It's, I mean... The exact same well, as it was in the it, year of our Lord 2017. It's not as glitchy. I'd say... I, I don't think it's quite as like glitchy and rubber bandy as it was before. I think they made some quality of life improvements. Like I think it is a better product than it was when it first came out. That being said, there's nothing tangibly different. Number four, Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Um, I did not get the PC release, which came out this year. Yeah, I don't know. Red Dead 2 came out la- late last year. Um, I did play some Red Dead Online, which has had some updates this year. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, it's allowed. Come on, man, I need this. 
<laughs> you gotta play the PC. Oh, no. uh, number three, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, really good game. Really fun. Been playing a lot of that on my Switch. Uh, the only game I've played on my Switch more is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which came out in 2017, so can't put it on here. Even though we put it on the 2018 list. You beat Breath of the Wild. Yeah. You beat Breath of the Wild, and you might have played it more than any of the games outside of your top three. Yeah. I, I played a lot of Breath of the that, Wild. It didn't come out this year, though. I also still played a lot of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and Hollow Knight and those sorts of games, but they came. I think they all came out in 2017. 2017 was a great year it for was. Video games. It was. It really fair. was a good year for yeah. games. Um, number two, Apex Legends. Um, don't know how this didn't make it onto your list, Lucas. We played a lot of this game. Uh, yeah, and we were pissed off every time we stopped playing it's that a game. Battle Royale, like how many? Like I know that Overwatch is what it is now, and I'm not gonna say that it's good. But like we played that game and had a lot of fun for a long time, and we were still pissed off every single time we played that game. Well, yeah, but at least with Overwatch, we had the excuse of, oh, all of our team is shit, and not, oh, man, we are just not very good no, at this we game. we weren't good at this game, but it was still good. Like, it was still fun. It was good because we were hanging out and shooting the shit, not because the game itself hey, is great. maybe that is the goal of Apex Legends. Hang out with your friends, Oof. shoot the shit. That's the real message there. Any- Andrew, I love you and treasure our friendship. Anyway, number one, Death Stranding. That's where it belongs. That's what it is. Mm. Really good game. Uh, still not done with it yet. Enjoying the shit out of it. Jesus Christ. Love it. Where are you right now? Um, I just fought a tar lion monster. I trekked through the mountains for like three hours and brought a bunch of weapons because I thought I'd have to use them. And I didn't because I was able to sneak around enemies and shit. And then went... You know, got to the area I needed to, had to, like, pick up and carry a person on my back, so I had to drop literally all of my weapons except for, like, one, and then immediately entered a boss fight. Did, uh, did you get the voice line from Die Hard Men when you run into, like, the level two mules? Uh, where it's like, please don't kill people? No, no, it was more like, uh, I... I don't know, maybe you missed it because I think I definitely ran into this earlier. But, um, yeah, now the mules have guns. And the explanation for it is, uh, look out, Sam. These are, like, these aren't just regular mules. They're terrorists. Delivering packages doesn't do it for them anymore. Now they can only get a rush from killing people. Oh, shit. No, I did not, I did not get that voice line. I thought it was just assumed that those were, like, a terrorist outpost because, like, you know, terrorists have shit to do with the the plot of the game. I didn't know that they, like, were mules and just decided to kill people so that they could get that adrenaline rush. God damn it. It's so stupid. <laughs> I <laughs> love too. it. Ryan, what, what, what's your top ten list? Oh, are we done? All right, cool. Um... <laughs> Numbers 6 through 10, blank. I played a lot of video games this year, but I really, yeah, none of them. You were, you yeah. suggested the, uh... Oh, no, I love it. Okay. I mean, for all the other categories, I made it. I'm not a, I'm not a super, I'm a, I'm a relatively casual gamer for someone who owns a PC. Fair. I've downloaded a lot of, like, PC kind of for fun games and play them, but Do you I think... don't think I get into, like, the hardcore, crazy PC stuff. Do you think you might try out, like, the... I don't know, like, uh, more indie, cheaper games moving into next year at all? Or is that just... No, I always have. I just, I guess I never do it on the day of, because I usually pick them up in the winter and summer sales. Oh, so that's usually fair. It's like a couple years after they come out. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I love the, that community, and I think that that's honestly the best reason to get a gaming PC, mm. is the really cheap, inexpensive, but fantastically made with love games out there. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, speaking of fantastically made and games made with love, <laughs> my number five is Madden 20, 
which is so bad on PC. I can't even explain to you guys. Like, it barely really? runs. And the announcers are, like, stuttering the whole time. <laughs> and, like, no, it's a really, really bad port. And I've Googled it, and they're just like, yeah, they didn't care about the PC version. Like, why are you playing this on PC? Like, that's all the comments. And it's so, so... that was bad. And that's so weird, because most games nowadays are made for PC first. And then everything else is the afterthought. Uh, Matt, Madden yeah. is such sports, a huge... Sports games are the exception. It's a huge franchise. How do they not put the work in? Sports games don't care about PC because <laughs> everyone plays on console. Because it's a casual game by nature. <sighs> so, um, But slightly better made, but still really not good. Uh, NBA 2K20, which runs super smoothly, but also... Is like more cash transactions than ever. Great. So, yay. Both of those, please, for the love of God, don't put them on the list. <laughs> that would be almost as bad as Good Omens making it. Um, number three, Apex Legends. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, it was. It was all right on console, PC. Good God, it's that hard. is a nightmare. Yeah, we played on PC uh, a little number bit. Two. That was rough. Oh God. No, 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 thanks. I'll stick with my number two, which is PUBG, because apparently that counts, so I'll put it on there. And then uh, number one, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, the PC release. I haven't gotten into any of the mods yet, but I did just beat Ooh. the game. There were still <laughs> epilogues. Um, God, you just whipped your dick all over Andrew's table, didn't you? Andrew doesn't consume media in the same way I do. <laughs> that much is obvious. Is Ghost still um, alive? Yes. Okay. He is. Okay. So. That. Yep. On we move. How? Uh, yeah. But there was a PC release in 2019. The modding community has kind of taken it up, and it looks really nice. So. Uh, it's on my list. Lucas, you want to kick us off? Number 10. Kicking us off with some weeb shit. Fire Emblem Three Houses at number 10. No! <laughs> okay. Andrew. I say no, because I'm... I hate you. <laughs> hey, Lucas. Good omens. Never Andrew, I kid. know you've seen some of the memes to come out of this game. Come I have. on. I've seen pretty good memes. Is it a good game, though? No. <laughs> you. Oh. Not even you don't know. You're just going with no. Yep. Okay. No. I'm going with no because of good omens. Wow. You so. No, I just don't like weep shit. Reap what you so. Andrew, you what are have... you going to nominate him? Oh, <laughs> yeah, now it's on you, man. man. You're going you're to throw fucking... the COD beta in there? <laughs> huh? You're going to feel proud of yourself doing that? Um, <laughs> He's done it before. He's put a show on that he knows doesn't deserve it. Shovel Knight at number 10. No. No? Too, uh, too low? Wait, no. I... It's two spots on, too low. Man. Yeah. I... <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> when did Shovel Knight come out? Uh, originally 2014. The latest campaign well, last week. Okay. I don't know. It, what got, that it got an expansion. <laughs> it got an expansion. Oh, okay. A free expansion. Yes. Number 10. Wh oh. I, I have actually played some Shovel Knight. <laughs> and Andrew recommended it. Although I'm kind of anti Andrew, too. Oh, come oh. on. So we're gonna say <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, number nine, PUBG. <laughs> that that's where that belongs. Sure. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I, what am I gonna do? Say it deserves to be in the top we... five? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, I I don't know for sure, but I feel like it's a safe bet that I played at least one game of Fortnite this year. Yeah, that came out with yeah, content. Yeah, probably. Like, did you guys not at all or just repressed it? I might I, not I, have. I, Lucas, huh. I think you and I still were playing Fortnite into this year. I might not have. And also, like, I didn't know about this whole loophole thing. Oh. <laughs> oh. PUBG and games like it until literally I booted up the list and Andrew's list was there. And I was like, PUBG? So, 
uh, would have obviously made my list considering the bottom two who 100% don't belong. But oh well. Lucas, what's number eight? Is it Fortnite? <laughs> it uh, came on none of our lists. He doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> We are going to, in theory, run out of yeah, <laughs> yeah. Games. There's a lot of weeb shit here. How weeby is Pokemon? I'll yeah, say yes to Pokemon. Put that on there. I, yeah. It's... I've, I've watched someone play that. So that's it, almost like I played it. I it You know what? I'm not... And Pokemon doesn't need me to go to bat for it. Pokemon Sword and Shield is, at the end of the day, just more Pokemon... But that's also kind of a winning formula. Yeah. What if we made a Pokemon that was a a Yeti Blue Snowball? And call it Podcasty. <laughs> what if, what I, if it just starts out we, as like a pair of like Apple headphones and then it's like a snowball and then it's like a boom mic? Jesus. Andrew, that's gold. Write that shit down. Yeah. Pitch it. Pitch that. Pitch that as your spec Pokemon. Then you can get into the artist's <laughs> oh, guild. Uh, is it my turn? Yeah, I believe so. I think I have to put River City Girls. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, you know what? Let's get off of our usual usual bullshit. What did you enjoy about River City Girls? I enjoyed playing it with my friend. <laughs> Fantastic. That is a good uh, couch co-op game. There you go. I, Having also played it, I also enjoyed playing it with my friend, and I feel like the uh, voice acting in that game is superb. And the right it really brings the very fun writing to life. Fair play. Make a sequel so you can retcon that shitty ending. Uh, number six is Red Dead Redemption Two, the twenty nineteen PC release. Huh. Thought you would have held out for that for later. All right. No. All right. Me? Let's put it there. I mean, I'm. Are you, do you have any reasoning there? I mean, I'm down, but... For the PC release? I mean, I think Rockstar Games, with the possible exception of Bethesda Games, are the ones that benefit the most from PC releases. Actually, yeah, no, I would say bar none, even Bethesda Games. Like, yeah. When it hits PC, the modding community makes a brand new video game. You know, like, it's, it's really cool what people can do with the framework that Rockstar provides, and I've already seen some really crazy mods uh, coming out. To be clear, does this knock out Andrew's Red Dead Redemption 2, or are we going to get, like, Red Dead Redemption 2... No, it's... it's Vanilla in the top three, and then PC at number, uh, uh, no, number we're six. Gonna, we're going to call this the same thing. Okay. I think that Andrew shouldn't count at all, but you know what? <laughs> Whatever. Um, to me. Uh, um, well, I think I'd be fine with Cadence of Hyrule at number five. Would it was you, fun. Andrew? It was brief. Andrew, if you want a game that you can play on your Switch, just pick it up, knock out, like, two levels and then go back about your business it's perfect for that switch it to link's awakening you got yourself a deal why don't you like cadence of hyrule reskin of another shitty game that came out before that (laughs) can he switch i don't know that is not allowed in our system you gotta you you gotta stand up until you gotta stand up for your choice until you're voted down it's like when they made that Hyrule Heroes game that was just like a like a slasher reskin of another game. I forget what it's called. Like it, yeah. come on, you know what this is. 
Are you saying the game wasn't good because it's like another well, it's not game? Like another game, both it of is, which it, you haven't it played. It's not like another game. It's just a reskin. I. It has a different art direction and more in-depth mechanics. It's like Crypt of the Necro Dancer isn't uh, like tile-based that uh, Cadence of Hyrule is. I don't. Are you saying that because they share the main idea of you can only move in beat with the music that that makes it bad? Well, it was made by the same people too. Like they just contracted <laughs> out and said, "Hey, you made Crypt of the Necto- Necro Dancer. Turn that into Zelda, and you got yourself a game." I, they asked Nintendo if they could like add Link or Zelda to their game as like a fun DLC thing, and then Nintendo was like, "No, we like your game so much. If you wanted to like make a Zelda game in that style, we'd be down for it." And they did, and it was amazing. Well. Uh, we've both made our arguments. Ryan, what what have you decided? Oh, I'm the no. Oh. Never never five get good omens. <laughs> well. I blame both of you for this. <laughs> Equally. Andrew, to you then. Um, let's go with Apex Legends. Oh, you said no. <laughs> I say oh, yes. Lucas, did you say no? I didn't say I didn't say anything. It doesn't matter. I said yes. I mean, I'd be fine with Apex Legends at number uh, number five. All right. There you go. Now it's to me, <laughs> and I have no games left. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at Lucas's list. What is palatable for number four? I feel like Smash is too low. Yeah, let's do Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Sure. At number four. All right. Whoop. Yay. The real gamer <laughs> of the two finally got one. <laughs> I guess River City yeah. Girls. And Pokemon Swords and Shovel Knight. Never mind. He's crushing <laughs> it. Yay. I actually put the work in and I'm being rewarded for it. High school all over again. Jesus. Cool. Yeah, now I want to say no. Can I say no to my own? Can I rescind my yes? I don't... What? (laughs) What is that? I'm I'm looking at the math here. This isn't working Uh, out. Um, wait, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. anything <laughs> we, I throw out, you guys corner? are gonna say no to. <laughs> <laughs> right, we backed ourselves into a weird corner here. We all know what number yeah. one is. What's number two? Question mark. <laughs> More like what's number three? Well, three or two. We have a hole. There's a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas is. We've turned down too many. It's a Lucas's. good game that came out this year that none of us played. <laughs> Can we do that? Securo yeah. Shadows die twice. <laughs> Just throw it in there. We, none of us played it, but it, we all know it's good, and we probably all yeah. should have played it. I no. I don't want to give EA money. We're not giving EA money. All right. What's number three, Lucas? Um. Fallout seventy six. No, oh, fuck you. Uh, God, I don't fucking... <laughs> I don't even have anything left that I... I... <laughs> now you sound like Robert De Niro in The Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> Cadence of Hyrule. No, dude. No. No, All right, we... Andrew, you, you pick. I think you know who he's going to pick, and it's apparently EA and Evil. Don't make me do it. Number three. A game that none of us played. (laughs) (laughs) Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Yes. I'm going to say no. I said yes. It's too late. So. (laughs) The first ever game that none of us have played. To be clear. To be clear. 
Yes. You guys would rather include in our top ten yes. a game that none of us have played yes. rather than one that I played and genuinely enjoyed because... Feuds. <laughs> because good omens. <laughs> Actions have consequences. Hey, I saw plenty of YouTube <laughs> you know videos what? where they played Sekiro that I enjoyed <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ryan? I can respect that. I know Andrew's just saying no to my stuff because anime, and that's <laughs> shitty and well, reductive. No, it's not anime. I'm not saying no to it because it's anime, because it's not anime. You literally said no weeb <laughs> shit how many times well, during no, this that podcast? No, that was in regards to the anime. <laughs> this isn't anime, Luke. You said no to Fire Emblem Three Houses because well, weeb, weeb shit. <laughs> <laughs> In Nancy's defense. I, well, <laughs> <laughs> you would rather put a game that none of us have played than one that I enjoyed <laughs> just because you have arbitrarily decided that this is like anime, which is already a nebulous concept and therefore well, bad. Well, that is, that is a reason. The main reason is for <laughs> the conversation that we're having right now. Because <laughs> this is awesome. No, you're breaking cave. <laughs> I did you a favor of getting good omens. And you I'm, That is I not a favor. Ask for that is poison. Want... That is Grima worm tongue. <laughs> <laughs> no favors were done. Everyone lost. Right. <laughs> Can't you <Ryan>. see? <laughs> Number two, Super Smash Bros. Yes. Ultimate. I'm not type <laughs> Oh god, somebody already typed it in. Smash Bros. good. Still good, uh, almost a, exactly a year after it came out. Um, put fucking Travis Touchdown in it. That's all I need. Put fucking Waluigi in it. Yeah. The big dick bandit is an assist trophy. That doesn't matter. They're still you can't lagging. Him. You can't swing that big dick around. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't What if that was his... He swings that tennis racket around. What if that was his around? down B? <laughs> There's the dick swing. <laughs> Whips Whipping out, out your dick. In this kid's game. I mean, Travis's might be taking a shit, so that'd be okay. All right. Yeah. You save in the No More Heroes game by taking a shit. Um, is that to me for the number is. one, then? The formality, the number one game of 2019. Fortnite. <laughs> Owl boy. <laughs> Owl boy. Oh, remember Shammy? Yeah. He, anyway. is he doing okay? Yeah, he hasn't made anything. Wait, wait, what you got? What is it? It's Death Stranding. Come on. It is Death Stranding. Hi. God, Andrew, you are just at the point where that game gets both its most frustrating and its most rewarding. And its weirdest. So have fun. I look forward to it. How many of the pizza deliveries have you done? Just one. Those are important. Really? Yes. Oh my god. Do you realize what you've done, Andrew? What? <laughs> Look at the scores. Andrew. Andrew. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Yay! has won the gaming category with five games on his list. <laughs> Andrew with 36 points, Lucas with 34, and Ryan with 13. Oh, man. I did too well last year. It bit me in the oh, ass this year. Lucas, I'll admit I'm it. sorry. <laughs> this was all planned, wasn't it? This was all a part of Andrew's plan. I played you like fiddles, I did. <laughs> he fucking crushed us. Played us like a goddamn points. fiddle. Andrew ended up with a total of 110, uh, just wiping us out completely. Ryan with a total of 82, and then, of course, Lucas with a total of 83. Ooh. Oh, my God. That actually was really Ryan close. in last place with such a strong showing in television. Thank God. That's all I cared about. <laughs> I don't give a shit about last place. You min max. All I, 
You took the only thing I cared about <laughs> and fucking poisoned Jesus. it. You went into here with unreasonable expectations. They, they clearly weren't that unreasonable if I got almost everything I wanted except for the one thing that you guys chose well, to Well, and, and some of them were out of sequence. I don't yeah, care. Uh, nine, nine out of ten is not good for established. Nine out of pretty good, right? Well, I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. You almost... You were almost had as high of a score as me in the fucking movies category. You saw ten movies. <laughs> Um, I watched 35 fucking shows this year. I, you were getting paid to watch most of those. No, I was not. <laughs> it was my lunch break. <laughs> um, for posterity, uh, voluntary viewing top 10 games of 2019. So the correct ranking of games that came out or updated in 2019, even if I personally disagree with them, <laughs> I respect that this is the definitive ranking and everyone else is wrong. Number 10, Shovel Knight. 9, PUBG. 8, Pokemon Sword and Shield. 7, River City Girls. 6, Red Dead Redemption 2, both PC and vanilla. 5, Apex Legends. Four, Link's, uh, The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. Three, Sekiro, Shadows <laughs> Die Twice. Somehow. Two, <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And number one, Death Stranding. Well, there you have it, folks. There this has been two it. hours of our and our listeners' lives. Happy 2019. It's been great. This is one of my favorite yes. episodes. <laughs> this. As I think last year's was, too. It's, I, I really it's, enjoyed these. <laughs> A whole hell of a lot of fun to do this. Yep. We're, we're right. gonna we're gonna have to take a minute, um, maybe maybe explore ourselves for a little while. But mm-hmm. uh, tentatively, I think we can say we are all still friends somehow by the end of this podcast. Our characters may not. Do you be. think that plot line will <laughs> carry into twenty twenty? Yeah. Will the poison <laughs> carry into the new decade? There will be poison. An elephant never forgets. And I am an elephant for some reason. <laughs> it's it late. late. <laughs> yeah, it's late. And it and we've been talking for two hours. You can do the wind yeah. down. I am going to hop off. Oh boy. Um. Goodbye, Andrew. We will see you in 2020. Like all of you out there, we'll see the podcast in 2020. Uh, once again, we are going to be doing a bit of reformatting. Uh. And, uh, you know, still working that out a little bit. Uh, biggest thing is going to be probably breaking the podcast into some more digestible chunks and then definitely getting it back up on YouTube. Um, we are also going to open 2020 with our ranking of the previous decade's memes. So you can all look forward to that. And if you enjoyed this phenomenal episode of the podcast, be sure to support us on Patreon. Uh, www.patreon.com backslash voluntary underscore viewing. You can join the likes of the amazing Sucky Badger and the ever erotic sensual Richard Nixon. Outside of that, of course, you can send us any of your questions or business opportunities to our email voluntaryviewing at gmail.com or message us over SoundCloud. Uh, Also, be sure to like this episode of the podcast, give it a rating, subscribe for more, and follow us on Twitter at V2 underscore podcast and me on Twitter at Lucas the Writer. Our next episode will be a regular episode kicking off 2020 with episode 79, I think. It might be. No, it's 79. It's It's 79 for sure. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, yeah, and that'll probably come, uh, after the first non-holiday weekend of, of the Roaring Twenties. Ryan, what, on what note are we going to close this decade, this year, which is the first complete year of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I... I thank you all for listening. And if there's one thing that I want you to know from these hours and hours of endless audio entertainment, it's that snakes 
are all around you. <laughs> and watch out for goddamn poison. <laughs> Ryan, I also love you and treasure our friendship. I'm working my way back. I think this break will be good before the new year. See you all in the future, everybody. Goodbye.